So we're all stuck at home right now. We can't go out and slay those local PC hardware deals. So today I'm gonna to show you how to build a quarantine friendly $300 gaming PC. And then of course, we're gonna benchmark it. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm gonna to show you how to build a quarantine friendly, online only $300 used gaming PC. And if you're new here and you wanna see other gaming PC build guides just like this one, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's check this build out. Before jumping straight into the parts list like normal, I do have three quick disclaimers for you guys. First, this entire PC build was actually purchased during one of my Twitch live streams, twitch.tv slash Zach's Tech Turf. Most of you actually found these deals for me, but then we had another live stream where I assembled it for you guys. It was a Thirsty Thursday live stream and we had some ridiculous donations come in to keep the drinks flowing, so this build did take a little longer to assemble than it normally does. My Twitch channel is clearly the place to be. I'm trying to post more PC building content, so make sure you're following me over there. The second disclaimer is that none of these deals that we found were once in a lifetime deals and I'm pretty confident that you can completely replicate this for yourself today if you wanted to. We did indeed find some crazy deals during the live stream, but I didn't want to include those because this build guide is meant to be repeatable. Finally, my last disclaimer is that you should be really careful right now when you're buying used parts, even if you're not buying them local and you bought them online like I did. As you guys know, certain things that I'm not allowed to say on YouTube or I'll get demonetized can live on materials like cardboard for around 24 hours, so I've personally been letting my boxes from the delivery driver sit there for two to three days before I touch them. There's actually a really low chance that you would get it into your system from touching the box. You'd actually have to touch the box and then touch your face, but I'm trying to be as safe as I can over here and I recommend you doing the same. With all that being said, the first part up on the list is the CPU and during the live stream, we decided to go with this i5 3570. The 3570 has been on my channel before, such as inside some of the Dell Optiplex gaming PC build guides and it's rocking four cores, four threads and a turbo clock of 3.8 gigahertz. When I first started the live stream, I initially thought that we could get like a first generation Ryzen CPU with an AM4 motherboard in this $300 system, but I was way off and the market just isn't what it used to be and I just couldn't squeeze it into this build. The 3570 is still a solid option, although it will become the bottleneck in very CPU demanding titles. Moving on to our motherboard, we actually originally picked out a Gigabyte H61, but that order never completed, so I actually switched to this ECS2 H77H2, which I actually picked up for only $39. This motherboard is H77, which which means we'll get two SATA 3 ports so we can get the full speed of our SSD. And this deal even came with a Cooler Master CPU cooler, which I really needed. And the picture said it would come with an IO shield, but it didn't. So try not to go crazy down in the comment section about it. For RAM, here's where we had the biggest debate in the Twitch live stream. I personally decided to go with this 2x4 gigabyte DDR3 kit clocked at 1600 megahertz. You could potentially squeeze in 16 gigabytes. And I recommend that if you have a budget of like $315, but I wanted to keep this budget super strict so we could only fit eight gigabytes. Moving on to the SSD, I just mentioned this in my video last week that the SSD market is completely messed up right now due to the current events. So this 500 gigabyte Samsung 850 Evo for only $52 was actually a really good find. Right now, this SSD is going for a whopping $85 brand new because of our current market conditions. So I was very happy with finding this deal. Moving on to our power supply, this is the EVGA 600 watt 80 plus certified unit. There's nothing special about it with its non-modular design and ketchup and mustard cable but you can almost always find this on EVGA B stock on Wednesday mornings for $30, so it's an easy choice for these budget builds. To keep the graphics card situation for last, the case that we chose was shout out to Ryan in our Discord for finding it. This here is the DIY PC DIY S07 that was on sale on Newegg down to just $35, including shipping. Now this case I'm actually pretty excited about. You probably noticed that I included it in my bill guide from last week's video, but for $30 before shipping, you're getting a nice clean black design. You get the mesh front up here for perfect airflow. And although it's not a tempered glass side panel and it is a 
acrylic. It's tinted enough so you can hide away all of our budget hardware considerations, but you can still see the RGBs in there. And as promised, our final part in our $300 build is the graphics card, and here's where things didn't go so smoothly. This is the original card I bought. It's the Gigabyte RX 584 Gigabyte model. We actually found it for $100, which is a decent but not crazy deal, but it actually arrived defective, so I had to return it. I'm actually pretty bummed about this. The ad specifically said 100% guaranteed to be working, which is obviously just a bunch of fake news. There's even a screw on the back plate missing, so I know that they were messing with it. So the only thing that I could obviously do was swap it out for another RX 580 that I had down here in the studio. For the purpose of this video, I think we're perfectly fine. I saw and am still currently seeing RX 580s on sale on eBay for around $100. Feel free to go with whichever model you want, and for the benchmarks today, we'll see pretty much the same results as the one I originally bought. With the performance parts out of the way, I also had to throw in some RGBs. Just like I've been explaining in my recent build guides lately, I got a throw RGBs in here for two reasons. The first one is the thumbnail of this video so people click on it more and the second is so I could sell it easier on the local market once I'm allowed to actually leave my house and sell it. But for this build, I just decided to throw a couple RGB fans up front. Up at the front, these are some deep cool MF120Ss. I've actually never used these before, but they have a really unique design to them. They're super clean and low profile, so they're perfect up front here. And they can also be controlled from a push button for older motherboards that don't have an RG port like this one. You can change them to whatever color you want. In the back, here's a super random 80 millimeter white LED fan that I had laying around for years now, and I've been meaning to get rid of it. You can only fit an 80 millimeter meter back here FYI. With that being said, here's what the entire parts list is looking like other than the non-essential RGB parts. I don't include these in my parts list because you obviously don't need them, but do be aware that you will need some sort of fans for the front because the case only ships with that 80 millimeter fan in the back. For those of you that aren't going to throw in RGBs, here's what the build actually looked like before I swapped them out. As you can see, this build doesn't look that special, but it will indeed get the exact same performance results. Speaking of which, I'm very excited that I decided to do my benchmarking run a little bit different for this build. Normally when I do this part of the video, I just try and blaze through it. I try to record the gaming footage as fast as I can just so I could get it over with. But for this build and for future builds, I decided that I'm just going to relax and take my time and actually enjoy my time gaming on the PC that I just built. And Oh my god, it made such a big difference. In my very first game of Fortnite, I recorded six kills, which is just absolutely crazy for someone like me. That's how you know that this is a good gaming PC build, so enjoy the better gaming footage. All right, so first up was indeed Fortnite. Once again, this is by far the best I've ever played Fortnite. It may not seem crazy to you pro gamers out there, but for me, this was the highlight of my week. For this machine in 1080p and low settings, but with epic distance, aka pro settings, I managed to squeeze out 146 frames per second. Next up was Rainbow Six Siege. As you can see, here's some scenario gameplay that I was doing because I still don't know how to play this game properly yet, but I did test it with the built-in benchmark so it's consistent and in 1080p with very high settings, I averaged 143 frames per second. After that was Counter-Strike Global Offensive, got myself a nice triple kill here before getting popped in the face, and in 1080p with low settings, I got a nice 126 frames per second, but games like this are where you can tell the 3570 is the limiting factor. Getting into our tougher to run games, I fired up the insanely popular Call of Duty Warzone, a game that I really regret not making a dedicated benchmarking video on, and in 1080p with normal settings, aka medium, I got a nice 97 frames per second. After that was Gears 5, I actually got to enjoy a little bit of the campaign on this one, which isn't something that I typically do during these benchmarking runs, but once again, with the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p and medium settings, I got a nice 56 frames per second. Monster Hunter World followed. This is the one game that I'm pretty intimidated to keep playing, because once you progress far enough, you have to like really research how to kill these monsters, and it's just not something that I have the time for, but in 1080p, I had to knock the settings down to low and still only got 33 FPS. This was a very playable 33 FPS as you can clearly see, but this game really relies on the CPU and that was our limiting factor here again. For our last game, I fired up Borderlands 3. Once again, it was very fun to sit down and actually play a mission with our $300 build instead of just recording the benchmark, but in 1080p and medium settings, I got just over our target 60 FPS mark. Well, there you have it. That's going to wrap up my $300 quarantine-friendly gaming PC build guide. As always, drop a comment down below 
about what you thought of this build and please stay safe out there and don't risk getting sick for a local PC hardware deal. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet. Definitely hit that subscribe button and make sure you follow me over on Twitch because I'm going to be doing more gaming PC builds just like this one.